section 11.3, the interval tests and estimate the sums. In general, it is difficult to find the exact sum of a series. We often are able to accomplish this for some geometric series because they're relatively simple, like the examples we saw in the previous sections. But usually it isn't easy to discover such formula. Therefore, the next section to develop several tests that enable us to determine whether a series is convergent, divergent, or divergent without explicitly finding its sum. Let's begin with the integral test. The integral test reads, suppose f is continuous, positive, and a decrease in function on the interval from 1 to infinity. Let a, a n equal f of n, then the series sigma from n equals 1 to infinity of a n is convergent if and only if the improper integral of 1 to infinity of f of x dx is convergent. In other words, 1. If the integral from 1 to infinity is convergent, then its sum is convergent. And similarly, if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx is divergent, then so it's the sum. Let's go ahead and do an example. For this one, we're going to apply the integral test. So again, we have to change this to a function. All that means in practice is we change our variable from an n to an x. So we have our limit as, so we're going to write our integral from t to 1, but we hope to reach infinity. So we'll say t as t approaches infinity, instead of writing infinity directly, of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So let's find this integral. This one we call it's one of those trig identities. So our integral is tangent inverse of x. We're going to let x equal t and x equal 1. As t is approaching infinity, that's our limit. OK, let's go ahead and plug in these values. So we have tangent inverse of t minus tangent inverse of 1. For tangent inverse of 1, we know that's pi over 4. For this one here, you want to apply the limit. I forgot to write it down. The limit as t is approaching infinity. Now for this one, we call your calc 1 knowledge. Basically, it's approaching the horizontal asymptote pi over 4. Oh, sorry, pi over 2. So we're left with pi over 2 minus pi over 4, which gives us, once you get a common denominator, pi over 4. Because we're able to reach an answer, then it's approaching a value. Therefore, it's convergent. So by the integral test, the series is convergent. All right, next problem. For what values of p is the series convergent? Well, let's consider cases where p is less than 1, I'm sorry, less than 0, if p is equal to 1, I'm sorry, 0, I keep saying 1, or if p is greater than 0. Now p is your exponent. All right, so if p is less than 0, we're going to have a negative. So we're essentially going to have the limit as um, n is approaching infinity of 1 over and to the negative p, which is going to result in an integer. So this is going to be getting bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger. So it's going to be approaching infinity. If p is 0, we have 
and to the zero power, which gives us one. And if p is greater than zero, we're going to have one over n to the p. So we know that's going to be continuous, positive, and decreasing. It's going to be some approaching some value. If there were just an x, then maybe it would be something like zero. So now it's continuous, positive, and decreasing. So we can come up with the conclusion that as the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p converges, if p is greater than 1 and diverges, if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, these three cases lead us to our conclusion, which is called the P-series. So our example is actually the thought process behind this theorem. The P-series, the sigma, the sum of from 1 to, let me start again, the sum when n is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the P is convergent if P is greater than 1 and divergent if p is less than or equal to 1. So we're just looking at the exponent in our denominator. So let's take a look at this example. We have a sum of 1, to, uh, one over 1 to the third power, 1 over 2 to the third power, and so on. We just have to find this value p. In this case, our p is 3. And since 3 is greater than 1, right there I'm above, we can say that it's convergent. Next problem. Our exponent is a, is a rational exponent. So our p is the cube root or a one-third exponent. One-third is less than one, therefore it's divergent. Pretty straightforward. P, p series is very helpful. But not all series fall under this p series veil. One more example, determine whether the series converges or diverges. So let's use the integral test from the beginning of the section. If the limit as t is approaching infinity from t to 1 of the ln of x over x dx, if we integrate, we're left with ln of x squared over 2. We're going to let x equal t and x equal 1. Don't forget your limit. All right. Our answer is the limit as t is approaching infinity of the ln of x squared over 2 minus, now we plug in a 1, the ln of 1 squared over 2. For ln to be 1, then our answer is 0, so all of that is just 0, since our numerator is 0. So now we're left to just answer this part here. As t is getting larger, we see that our ln value is also going to get larger. So therefore, our answer is infinity. So we conclude that it is divergent. All right, that was section 11.3. Your homework is made up of problems 3, 5, 7, 9, 13, 19, and 29. Thanks.